Hey, hey everyone, back again. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these keyword things, but better late than never. Uh, if you're watching this, you may have noticed that my bookshelf is empty, and that's because I'm in the process of moving and the books had to go, except for a few, and it's a long story, but I won't get into that now. And just because I know a bunch of people will ask, I'm moving to Montreal. Hopefully we'll be there full time in the new year maybe a little before, but in any case, we're going to talk about necropolitics today. So I've done a full episode on Ishil Mbembe's essay dealing specifically with this topic. But today I just want to give more of a highlights as to what's going on with that term, why he's using it, and what he's using it to respond to, specifically the work of Foucault. Now in that text, he makes a lot of reference to other thinkers, including um, Bataille and, and Heidegger, Hegel and a number of others. and I'm not going to get into them so much here, more just Foucault and the what Mbembe is doing in response to Foucault. Now before jumping into it, if you want to follow me anywhere other than here, you can find me on Instagram at theory underscore and underscore philosophy or on Twitter at David Guigno. If you're new here, welcome. I'm David. I try to explain philosophical texts and ideas in a way that makes them accessible to you. So if you're new, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, who knows, they might get a kick out of it or they might not, but you could try. If you haven't already, like, share, subscribe. If you want to help me out, do all those things. You can help me out monetarily via Patreon or PayPal. If you found this on YouTube, you'll be able to find it in podcast form pretty much anywhere where you get podcasts where so there shouldn't be any ads. Or if you found this in podcast form, you'll be able to find it on YouTube. And in this case, you'll see a video with a, a barren bookcase behind me. But in any case, let's jump into it because I don't want to waste any more of your time with that stuff. So, necropolitics. To put it simply, this is Mbembe's way to respond to Foucault's notion of biopolitics. Now, I've done a whole episode on that term alone, which you can go check out if you want. The, the short form of it is that, as Foucault describes it, is that there was a transformation in the way that power was organized between what he calls sovereign power to disciplinary power and then biopower. Now, to put this transformation pretty simply, what he says is that there was once a time, and we're probably all familiar with this idea, where a king or queen, some kind of royalty, held control over uh, a state, and they got to decide who lived and who died. And they often exerted their power and demonstrated their power by putting people to death. So here we might think of executions happening in the town square or anything like that, sending armies to go and kill many people and so on. Now, Foucault says that there was, at one point, there was a transformation in this logic of control and power, where it became not necessarily about the capacity to put someone to death, but also how can a system organize itself by commanding life, by actually proliferating life, by putting life under more stringent control, not necessarily to end it, but to control it. And through this control could come a kind of proliferation. So we actually see a kind of expansion of life where the focus is on controlling populations and bodies over putting them to death. Because that is messy. Exerting such overt power over a group of people, over a population, through the act of killing, makes that person, that is the person calling the shots, too much of a target. That's just a very fantastic way to make the people turn against you and have some kind of a mutiny. Now in this case, because power works in such a way that it almost appears to be benevolent. And this assumes the form of control over populations like over, for example, reproductive rights, the formation of various logics pertaining to race and racism. And these play themselves out in many institutions from uh, schools to hospitals, clinics, and so on. They appear to be quite benevolent. Yet, and Foucault does this really well, he demonstrates that they aren't nearly so benevolent, nor are they marvels in terms of scientific development and rigor in the way that they claim to be. Now, Ashim Bembe is dissatisfied with this formulation because he's looking around, he looks at history, and he says, there seems to be a lot of death still going on. There seems to be lots of people still being put to death, lots of people still suffering physically. They aren't, their bodies aren't proliferating. They aren't being controlled through these institutions. There are bombs dropping on people. There are governments exerting unimaginable control and power over certain bodies. So he says, well, it seems as though biopolitics, biopower is only half the story. We also need a way to account for the death that is still ensuing. 
and this is what he calls necropolitics or necropower. Now this exerts itself in a very different way than it did under a sovereign as Foucault described it, you know, the person that would call the shots and got to decide who would live and who would die. Necropolitics from Bembe exerts itself with a kind of statistical perfection. That is, it deploys tactics and strategies to put an end to certain populations, to certain bodies with minimal resistance. So here we aren't thinking of dueling armies. We are thinking of populations being put to death at the behest of the state that has deemed these bodies, has deemed these people to be less than living, to be, to borrow one of Agamben's terms, somebody that Mbembe is indebted to, to reduce them to the state of bare life, to make it so that they have nothing to offer other than the fact that they are bodies. And when people are reduced to just bare life, then their life doesn't have any extra meaning and they can then be expendable, they can be reduced to nothing. Mbembe says that this type of necropower has a very long history, and this act of reducing populations to this kind of bare life, to this life that is not worth living, it is therefore expendable. And it goes all the way back to colonial times and the long leg legacy of slavery that much of Europe, the United States, Canada, and many other parts of the globe are built upon. These were acts that reduced certain populations, notably black and indigenous people, to just bare life. They could just then be seen as useful tools for someone else's livelihood, for someone else's benefit. Now this was an example of necropower because it reduced these people to a kind of living death, to a point that they all they had was what they could give to somebody else. They had no life for themselves. Now we see this playing out for him in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict where Palestinian people are repeatedly reduced to this kind of bare life. They are reduced to the point of being on constant alertness for any kind of imminent attack while having very little power, very little opportunity to actually defend themselves. They are very much at the behest of neighboring Israel and other uh, global state powers that have a vested interest in that territory. And so he uses that example to demonstrate that necropower is very much on full display. It is not just about expanding life, controlling populations. It is about reducing people to nothing so that they can then be more easily killed. And of course, the same logics could have been seen and have foreseen in the Holocaust where Jewish people were reduced to this level of nothingness that could make them that much more easily to be killed. They were reduced to a kind of statistic, just numbers on sheets that stripped them of their humanity, making it easier for someone to conduct the train to Auschwitz or to Dachau or to any one of the other concentration camps or for somebody else to check the people in there to keep logs of them. When you reduce people to that level of being, if we can call it being at all, then they become much more susceptible, they become vulnerable to these kinds of attacks, these wide-scale necropolitical attacks against them. Now these are all examples of what he calls death worlds. Entire sites, places, spaces reduced to a status of d d death world where only death can ensue, be it an actual physical death or the reduction of a body to bare life, to having no purpose other than just living off of the absolute bare minimum, to a kind of living death, in that space that is in this death world, people are reduced to this reprehensible status and they have no way to actually get out of it in the face of these global superpowers that make it so, that put them in these positions alongside all of the many institutions that justify people being reduced to this status of bare life. And that more or less covers what Mbembe is doing here in his response to Foucault. If you want more of it, go check out that other video I did or explain in much more depth the, uh, the entire essay. But if you like what I did here, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, yeah, catch you next time. Take care.